Wow, I'm really so blessed with the worship tonight. What a confirmation. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning in verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But you, man of God, flee from all this. Pursue righteousness. To be nothing, pursue righteousness. And he's going to give us several things here that we should be pursuing in our whole life. And so I want to just, you know, let this get down on your heart. I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. These are the things we should be pursuing. Pursue righteousness. Pursue godliness. Pursue faith. Pursue love. Pursue endurance. Pursue gentleness. Then he goes on to say, fight the good fight. Somebody then fight the good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The title of the message tonight is Fight the Good Fight of Faith. Somebody say, Fight the Good Fight of Faith. Fight so I want to just kind of uh, build on the concept I tried to introduce, I think it was last week or maybe it was on Sunday, I can't remember which, that there is something called active faith and passive faith. So being not an active faith and passive faith. Now, nice ko pong maunawa natin that these are both biblical principles. These are both vital parts of our Christian life. So one is not more important than the other. Neither is, you know, the other more important than the other. The active faith and passive faith are both very important concepts in Scripture. But we've got to learn when we should just be resting in the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about the rest of faith. The Bible talks about just trusting in Him, casting all of our cares on Him, and, and just, you know, giving it all to God. That, that's kind of a passive faith. There, there's, I, I want to give several verses about that, and then I want us to, to really focus in on active faith. But when we talk about the passive kind of faith or the rest of faith, uh, these can be exemplified in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, when it says, Be still and know that I am God. So may mga panahon sa buhay natin, when we are facing giants, we are facing great difficulties, there's some times in our life when God just says, just be still. Just trust me. You don't have to fight. You don't have to strive. You don't have to do much of it. Just put your trust in me and just watch. I'm going to move. I'm going to take care of this. Amen, Baba. That's kind of a passive kind of faith. So this is over and over in scriptures, this concept of just trusting in God, turning it all over to Him, surrendering the problems to Him, and just, just that, that inner, inner confidence. So there's this inner confidence that you don't need to do anything. The battle belongs to the Lord. So in many times in life, this is really uh, what, what we need to do. We need to just trust in Him, surrender the situation to Him, don't strive, don't try to make it happen, etc. Again, another verse would, that would be uh, similar to that, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 15, in quietness and trust is your strength. In quietness and trust, again, Hebrews talks about entering into the rest of faith. So we have the rest of faith. So, so there are times in our life when we face difficulties, huge problems, and God just says, be still, be quiet, hold your peace. You don't need to fight. This is my battle. I'm going to fight this battle. Amen, Baba. But there are other times when we need to take up the shield of faith, take up the sword of the Spirit, put on the helmet of salvation, and aggressively advance, exercising our authority. Amen, Baba. And so here's what I find. I find that the great majority of Christians they default to the, the kind of the passive faith, the trusting in God. And sometimes that's what God wants us to do. But, but here's what I find happening. Subuhay na marami mga Kristiyano. They are, they assume that they are trusting in the Lord, but actually they're being passive when they should be aggressive. Are you following me? So there are times in our lives that God wants us to rise up and take our authority in Christ to wield the sword of the Spirit, to lift up the shield of faith, to make faith declarations in order to see the battle won. Can you say amen? amen? 
And if you don't do that, when the time is to fight, if you don't do that, you're going to get beat up. And you know, I've even heard Christians say, ah, hindi ko naintindihan, bakit ganun, Panginoon, nagtitiwala naman ako sa iyo. Ha? Huh? Nagtitiwala naman ako sa iyo, bakit ganun nangyari? Well, because that was not the time to just have a passive faith. There are occasions when God says, just be still. Haya mo, turn it over to me, I'll take care of it. But there are other times when you've got to rise up and exercise your faith and take the authority. Amen, Boba. All right, so we're going to look at this tonight, and I pray that God will just give you some fresh revelation, some understanding, some mga bagat, some mga bagat nito. Another one of those times that is more kind of a passive faith, mababasa po natin dito sa 1 Chronicles chapter 20. We're talking about the battles of life, how to win the battles of life. Whether, you know, just like Micah said earlier, I'm so blessed. It's like, she's like she's reading my notes, you know. Whether it's the battles in your family or your finances, whether it's battles with sickness and disease, whether it's personal struggles, anuman problema, there are times again when God just says, be still. Hayaan mo, ako bahala. There are other times when we've got to rise up. Now, one of those times that it's more of a, uh, more of a, uh, a rest of faith, more of a passive faith, even though it's a battle, but we see how the Lord wins this battle. First Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 15. First Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 15. This is the prophet Jehaziel, and he's prophesying to King Jehoshaphat, who has this massive army of several nations that's come against Israel, and they're about to kill them. They're about to destroy them. They're like way too big for, for the Israel's, Israelites to face. And this is the word of the Lord to Jehoshaphat in that situation. Second Chronicle, I'm sorry, First Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 15. He says, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the paths of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jerul. You will not have to fight this battle. So there are times that God does this. God says, you're not going to have to fight this battle. I'm just going to move on your behalf. You're going to watch and see me do something. And so God gives you that rest of faith. I mean, rest of faith. That, that inner confidence on the inside na, alam, alam ko, mahal ang Panginoon. I, I know in my heart, God's going to get me through this. I know in my heart that God's going to move on my behalf, even I don't do anything. But it's not always like that. Hello. It's not, and that's where I think a lot of Christians make a mistake. We tend to, we tend to, the majority of times, we, we're thinking that this is the stance that we have to take. And sometimes that's true, but not always true. Now, you know what happens in this, uh, in this passage here in 1 Chronicles? Uh, the, the, God, the God through the prophet says, you'll not have to fight this fight. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. And then we know the, the story. Jehoshaphat sends the worshipers out, and they just worship God. And then the, uh, the armies of the Lord, the unseen armies of the Lord, invade the enemy's camp, the enemy just kills each other, and, and, and Israel doesn't even have to pick up their sword. Hello. Israel, they just come in and pick up the plunder. Amen. That's the kind of battles we want. Amen. But it's not always like that. Not every battle is won that way. There are times, and, and again, I think our tendency is to, to think this way when we're facing a challenge, and, and I think that by doing that always, we just assume, we just assume, just rest, be still, trust. But there are times when God is telling us, stand up, take your authority, exercise your faith. If you will, if you will get in the battle and fight, then I'll be with you. Are you hearing me here tonight? All right, let me give you some passages about that as well. In Exodus chapter 17, the Amalekites have come against the nation of Israel and again, they are looking to destroy the Israelites. But this is not a time when God says, stand still. This is not a time when God says, be at peace. This is not a time when God says, just trust in me. This is a time when God says, go down 
pick up your sword, get in the fight, and I'll be with you. Are you following me? And, and so I think we make the mistake of assuming that every battle that we face, we're just to hayaan na lang, magtiwala ko sa Panginoon. When, the, when many of the battles that we face, God is commanding us. God is expecting us to use our authority. So be nothing, use your authority. God is expecting us that we have got to do our part. Let me go ahead and read this passage. Exodus chapter 17, beginning in verse 9. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men to go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. That speaks of authority. So we don't authority. That staff was speaking of authority. I'm going to give you another passage here in a moment where you can see that that staff, that rod, was the authority of God. Jesus said, I have given you authority. So we can be, I have given you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions, overcome all the power of the evil one. So here, in this situation, this is not a time, unlike Jehoshaphat, you know, just stand and see what I'm going to do. Just worship me, and, and you're going to see an amazing victory. And they saw that. They didn't have to fight. This was a time they had to fight. Are you following me? And if they would fight, God would be with them. Listen, if they didn't fight, they're going to get their butts kicked. They're going to get slaughtered. And I see Christians get beat up all the time because they're assuming that it's a time just to, I know, magtitiwala na ko ng bangin. Panginoon, Diyos ko po, hindi ko maintindihan kung bakit nangyayari ito, pero nagtitiwala ko sa iyo. And God is saying, get up and fight. Get up and exercise your faith. Get up and exercise your authority. I've given you authority to take to over snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the evil one. And so the Bible says here in uh, verse 11 of the same chapter, Exodus 17, as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were what? What were they doing? When were they winning? As long as Moses held up his hands, they were winning. As long as Moses held up their, his hands, they were winning. In other words, there are times when there is something for you to do. As long as you will declare God's word, as long as you will pray, as long as you will exercise your faith, as long as you will do your part, you will win. Now again, there are some times that God just says, rest in me, trust in me, hayamo, I'm going to move. You don't have to do anything. In this case, how many of you know Moses had to do something? Joshua had to do something. There was something for them to do in order to win the battle. So as long as Moses lifted up his hands in faith, then the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about my life. I'm talking about your family, your finances, your health, your spiritual life. There are times when you've got, to, as long as you will exercise your faith, pray in the Holy Ghost, prophesy, read the Word of God, then you will win. And so there are times that we need to just rest in God and trust in Him and don't strive and just believe that He'll, he'll uh, work on our behalf. But there are many times when we are resting, trusting, and believing that He'll work on our behalf when we should be fighting. Are you here tonight? When we should be using the authority that He's given us, exercising our faith, declaring the Word of God, prophesying to the situation. You know, we've got to uh, get into the fight. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war. Somebody say, wage war. We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. Somebody, somebody say divine power. Divine. divine power to demolish strongholds. 
strongholds of poverty, strongholds of vices, strongholds of pornography. These weapons that God has given us have divine power to demolish strongholds of discouragement, strongholds of apathy. These weapons have the ability to demolish strongholds. But how many of you know, if you don't pick up the weapon and fight, you're going to be captive. Hello. So God gives us the weapons to fight with in order that we can break free and destroy the works of darkness. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Th these passages I just read from Ephesians and 2 Corinthians, how many of you know, these are not passive, trust in the Lord and it'll be all right passages. Now sometimes we need to just trust in the Lord and it'll be all right. But these passages I just read, these are not trust in the Lord, it'll be all right. These are take up your weapons, exercise your faith, use the authority that I've given you. And so I think oftentimes we are facing great difficulties of life and we are wondering what it is that we should do. You know, remember Moses there in front of, in front of the Red Sea, again with the, the staff of God, the rod of God in his hand. And, and the Bible tells us in Exodus uh, chapter 14 and verse 15, and I believe that maybe the Lord is speaking some of this to us here tonight. In fact, I'll say this again. I find that the great majority of Christians, we default to just trust, just wait, and hayan ang Panginoon. And then we're confused when it doesn't work out. And we think, Lord, di ba nagtiwala ko sa'yo? And we don't understand that, and there are times to do that. But we don't understand that God is calling us to rise up, use our authority, declare His Word, pray in the Spirit, be aggressive in our faith, and then we will see God move. And so this is similar here to uh, what Moses is facing. They're, before, they're between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea, and the, the enemies of God are about to wipe out the nation of Israel, and so they do what all of us would do. They cry out to God, right? You know, we're about, we're about to get killed. We're about to be slaughtered. Joseph, oh, right? Look what the Lord answers to Moses. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Now, what, what a question to, answer, to ask. I want you to think about a moment. When you're in your prayer closet, and there's a, there's a crisis in your family. Maybe it's a financial crisis. Maybe there's somebody sick in your family. Maybe you're facing all kinds of turmoil in, in your home. And, and there's, you know, naga'awe awe. And you go into your closet. And you would cry out to God and say, God, please, please, please intervene. Please do something. What if you heard the Lord say this? Why are you crying to me? Well, Lord, I'm supposed to be crying to you. That's what I'm supposed to do. Not always. Hello. Hello. Look what the Lord says to Moses. God says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff. Stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Come on. God is saying, look, I've given you authority. Rise up, use your authority, and break through. God is saying, quit whining, quit complaining, quit crying. Get up, exercise your authority. That staff, it, that staff represents the authority of God. So get up, use the name of Jesus. Get up, use the word of God. Get up, begin to prophesy, begin to declare. Use, exercise your faith over the situation. If you will do that, then the sea will part. How many of you know if Moses would have sat there and just cried to the Lord, Lord, they would have all been killed. Hello. He had to get up. Hello. He had to get up and exercise his faith. He had to get up and use the authority that God had given him. And God actually rebuked him. He said, why are you crying to me? Tell the Israelites, move on. 
raise your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide the water so the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. So what am I saying? I'm saying is that we need to discern in the problems that we face in life, be they family problems, financial problems, physical, medical problems, spiritual, mental, emotional problems, and among our problems that we are facing in life, we've got to discern there are times when God says, Anak, trust in me. Haya mo, kikilos ako, ako bahala. This battle is not yours. I'm you just watch. You just watch. Just praise me. Just worship me. You just watch. I'm going to move. I'm going to take care of this. But oftentimes, that's what we default to when really what we need to do is to get up and exercise our authority in Jesus' name. I command you, Satan, you take your hand off of my family. You take your hand off of my finances. I rebuke every spirit of sickness out of my life, out of my family, out of my body in Jesus' name. You take and exercise your authority. And if you don't take and exercise your authority, if you don't fight when you're supposed to fight, if you get beat up, don't say, Bakit ganon, Panginoon? Hindi ko naintindihan. Nagtiwala naman ako sa'yo. And God is saying, I, see, see, I have given you authority. So the reason we get beat up is we're not exercising our authority. We're not exercising our faith. We're not using the weapons of the warfare. These are not just, they, they, these are not just nice words in the Bible that we fight against flesh and blood and against principalities and powers of darkness that God has given us the weapons of our war. These are not just nice words. These are things that we have to do. Amy Baba. Just like Moses, he had to lift his hands up. And as long as he kept his hands raised, the Israelites were winning. When he put his hands down, the Israelites were losing. And so it is with us. If we will declare God's word, if we will take our authority, if we will bind in the, you know, the, the, Jesus said to, to Peter, I, I give a, a power to you. I give to you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Sandali lang. Pakinggan natin. Hindi niya sinabi, God did not say, whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever I bind on uh, uh, heaven will be bound in earth. That's not what he said. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you bind in, uh, in heaven shall be bound in earth. Hello? So he's saying that, he's, he, he, that we have to exercise our authority. In fact, you and I are on this earth. We are in training for reigning. Hello? Somebody say training, training. for reigning. The, the Bible says that we will rule and reign with Christ. Listen, the, the, the battle in this earth between darkness and light is not a battle between God and Satan. Isang salita lamang, wala na si Satanas. Satan is no comparison to God. The myriads of demons in the world have, have no power. The battle is between you and Satan. Hello? There's no fight between God and Satan. It would be like me and Manny Pacquiao. I'm going to get beat up. Just, I'm going to be down very fast, right? There's just no fight. There's no fight there. The battle is between you and I and the works of darkness, that we are to exercise our authority in Christ, that we are to expand the kingdom of God by exercising our faith, expand God's kingdom in your home, expand God's kingdom in your mind, expand God's kingdom in your finances, expand God's kingdom in your family, even in your physical body by exercising your faith, by declaring the word, by little by little, you're taking more ground for His kingdom. Little by little, He's ruling, He's reigning in your home, in your finances, in your mind, in your heart, and your emotions. Can you say amen? Come on, palabana na on. We've got to exercise our faith. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. And if we refuse to fight, we're going to get beat up. I see lots of Christians getting beat up all the time. The Bible tells us here in Nehemiah chapter 4. (coughs) 
Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 14. When Sambalat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, the Amorites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the, that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. I tell you what, you know, the, the enemy, he hates it when God's people are winning, right? When God's people are advancing. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people of Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. You work and work, you do everything you know to do, but you just get tired. And there is so much rubble that we cannot, excuse me, we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemies said, before they know it our, or see us, we will be right there among them and it will kill them and put an end to this work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. You know, it's just like the end. I mean, these are, these are Jews. These are supposed to be covenant people, you know, but here you got people who, who, who believe in God, but they're the ones telling you, I just go on the money I say, oh, it's going to get worse, you know. Verse 13, therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families. Fight for your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. Now the interesting thing about this story is if, if you go on to read the rest of the chapter, they actually didn't even have to fight. The mere, in this particular passage in Nehemiah 4, the mere fact that they prepared for war, they were ready to fight, they were attentive, and they were alert, the enemy backed off. I'm talking about how to win in life. I'm talking about how to win in life. You don't have to fight every fight, every battle, but you better be constantly ready and prepared to fight. Hello. Because you could wear you out, right? I mean, if you've got to fight every single battle, it can, get, it can get tiring pretty fast. Many times, if, if the, the enemy knows, listen, it, it's just like those little dogs in your neighborhood, right? You, go, you know, come home at night, you walk down, and there's these little pesky dogs. And they come, and in a And as long as you run, they're going to chase you. But if you just turn around and, hmm, and then they'll run. Amen? So it's just like that as well. The enemy knows those that he can continue to torment and those that are going to be passive. And so he'll just keep coming. He'll just keep coming. Sometimes, though, you can build up such a defense that, and, and seriously, it should be automatic for every believer in Christ, that when the enemy comes in, you take authority. So be nothing, take authority. Now again, there'll be times, there'll be times when you take authority and you begin to rebuke and do all this other stuff and God says, wait, son, wait, 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 I'm not, just be still, right? You're, you're getting all worked up, just be still, be quiet. I'm going to take care of this, amen? But, but for me, it should be automatic that when I see the enemy come in, I begin to exercise my faith, exercise my authority, Use the word of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Christ, prophesy to the situation, declare God's victory over the situation, and if you'll keep your hands raised, you'll find that you continue to win. It's when you let your hands go down that you start to get beat up. I want us all to stand tonight. Let's, we want to pray together. Whatever you're facing here tonight, you, you may be in a financial crisis right now. There may be terrible problems at home. Maybe you're facing great de 
depression, discouragement. You know, a lot, a lot of people, man, a lot of people all over the world right now are facing depression and discouragement because of this, this pandemic. It's, it's not natural for us to not have, you know, fellowship and communication. You know, that can really drain you. But, but listen, the joy of the Lord is your strength, amen? As we, as we, the Bible says, in the last days, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We come together. It's like putting, putting pieces of wood in the fire. If we're all together, then the fire burns bright. But if you pull that piece of wood out and set it aside, it'll just begin to smoke. So we've, we've got to rise up and take on the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit and the helmet of salvation. So whatever you're facing here tonight, I want you to just hold that in your mind right now. I know that every one of us, we're facing something. Maybe it's a problem in relationships where a husband, a wife, a relative, a mom, a dad, whatever situation you're facing, maybe there's a physical sickness you have or your family has, maybe it's a financial crisis, maybe it's depression, discouragement, whatever situation that you are facing, I want us to just begin to declare the word of the Lord over that situation right now. Come on. Just open your mouth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I command the powers of darkness. Come on, open your mouth, exercise your faith. In Jesus' name, I command the powers of darkness to leave my family now. In the name of Jesus, every sickness must go. In Jesus' name, I command you, Satan, to take your hand off of my finances. In Jesus' name, I exercise my authority in Christ. In the name of Jesus, depression, discouragement, go. Go now in Jesus' name. I command you to leave me now in Jesus' name. I take authority over you now in Jesus' name. God is my salvation. He is my victory. He is the one who is with me. He will never leave me or forsake me. I declare the word of the Lord over this situation. By his stripes I am healed. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. He is my God. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace, the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name, we rebuke the spirits of darkness, the powers of darkness that are attacking our families, our marriages, our, our, our brothers and sisters, our moms and our dads. We rebuke the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would give us the strength, Lord, and the faith and, and the determination in our hearts to fight the good fight of faith like Moses, to keep our hands raised up, to keep the word of the Lord lifted up, to keep the prophetic word lifted up, to, be, to continue to declare what God is saying over these situations, Lord, that we might win in life. And Lord, I know that there are other times that you just speak to our hearts and say, peace, be still. Ahobahala. You won't have to fight this fight. God, I pray that you'll help us to discern and to realize that not every battle is the same, not every fight is the same. And we make a mistake by being passive in our faith in times that we need to be aggressive. And the same is true that we make a mistake when we're aggressive, when, we're, when we should just be trusting and being quiet before you. God, in Jesus' name, help us to discern the times to fight and the times to rest, the times to trust, and the times to exercise our authority. Because God, we know this, you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, oh God. You are always with us. Now Lord, I pray you would encourage your people tonight and always, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you.